Hello, my name is Terry Willing, and I'm going to talk to you today about some recent discoveries that I have made re um, regarding the city of Tulsa, Oklahoma, and how vastly complicated it is. In fact, this is this is I have two videos that, I, that I, two more videos. I've already made three, and I'm going to make at least two more, if not three, because I'm there's more idea, there's more things com coming out of my mind regarding this. This one is going to be, and then there's a third path that I'm not sure exactly how it, how it deals with Tulsa, other than the fact that the other video is about Janus, and Tulsa plays a huge part in that, that, that configuration of Janus, because the, this, the Shin, the Enterprise, the what have you, it's pointing that way um, from the Mississippi, um, the Rio Grande, the... Um, the Arkansas and the Missouri, with the Mississippi being the Capitoline Hill. It's pointed that way. Well, with the, um, uh, with the, with Tulsa, with, with Rome, it's pointed that way. So it's pointing east and pointing west with, and, and Tulsa is pretty close to right about there in the mathematics and that the, the center of the where Tulsa is in the mathematics, this would be and um, the Rio Grande the, the Rio Grande is here. Uh, this is the Arkansas River, and Tulsa is about right there based off of this this mathematics. Based on taking the the whole of the Arkansas River from it from its its headwaters, um, semi kind of sort of in, in, from Ruxton Creek and Fountain Creek and, and the such. In and around Carter Springs, Manitou, Old Carter City, and, and such like that. Down, down, uh, uh, west, out of, the, of that, of those um, valleys and such, out to Carter Springs, then down, and then west um, across portions of southern Kansas, and then, then the south again, um, a semi sort of kind of 45 degree angle through um, through Tulsa, Oklahoma. Down and then out of Oklahoma, uh, toward uh, west, toward the uh, east, toward the Mississippi, and that's where you have <coughs> the infrastructure of of this of, of this line. It's 800 miles total, and Tulsa is 300 miles, so it's approximately it's a tenth of a mile from sort of the middle of, of where the, the call of where the Capiline Hill used to, um, is where, where you where the middle of it, the, the ridge, the top ridge of it used to be, where, although it's been carved way, way, way down and, and, and regraded. It's about a 10th of a mile to the umbilicus of Rome, which is, which is its name post 250 B, 250 AD. It was called the traitor's post before then. And it's, Approximately that it's a, approximately ratio wise that distance from the uh, trader's post to uh, the umbilicus to the middle of the Colosseum. Well, if you if you the, those ratios are about right, so the so the the middle of the Colosseum would be the headwaters in Carter Springs ish Metroplex. Tulsa is a, approximately where trader's post is, and then uh, the top of the Capitoline Hill would be approximately where the Mississippi is ratio wise and such. This is a, approximates. Be nice if a mathematician and such would be able to actually crank this down to exact measurements, but that's not me. So you have the, the Janus thing, one face east, one face west. Now Janus, again, Janus is a, I've, I've said in many of these videos and I'll continue saying it because it's impossible to prove, statistically and such, it's impossible to prove it otherwise. There's no evidence in existence that that points to that the pyramids are not where, at least semi where Janus came from. Although it wouldn't be called Janus, it'd be called something else. The Egyptians called it something else. Because from the double-headed headed head of Janus, well, if you take it, if you draw a, a line from the top, uh, from the farthest north pyramid, Jedefrae, all the way down to, to the Bent Pyramid, the bottom half is facing is, is the spine almost perfectly the spine facing one direction and the and the top part is the spine is the spine facing the other direction 
so it could be a coincidence. Yeah, sure, it could be a coincidence, what have you. But the Aten, the ancient monotheistic deity, the Aten, which is, was in, in existence before the Pantheon was created, the Aten of Egypt was built into the was built into the pyramids as the causeways. The causeways may only be a mile or two long, but they extend out. They buy, the the causeways bisect key po- key sixteen key points, um, hundreds of miles away. The bent pyramid, the farthest south, by bi- bisects. Freemasons, are you listening? The bent pyramids causeway bisects King Solomon's Temple, the Temple Mound. The pep in the first pyramid. Its causeway bisects where the rumored the cave of the nativity took place, where the the events of the nativity they the, they took place. Well, there's a there's a huge cathedral on top of that cave. Well, that cave is rumored to be the birthplace of Jesus, which occurred roughly December 15th, uh, 25th ish. Although that's a little bit on the weird side to 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 find because the first 150 200 years of, of the history of Christianity has been um, it was not well documented, and the, power, and the political powers that be and the armies involved did a whole lot of burning things and killing people to make sure that they, whatever was present, whatever was talked about, was what they wanted it to say, the propaganda versus the facts and evidence and reality. Example, the, cruci- the crucifixion actually took place in Rome proper. Well, sort of. The trial took place on Trader's Post. That's where the trial took place, on Trader's Post. We're all, all, by the way, all, and all, um, I'm going to say that about 200 more times to make sure you, you get the point. All traitors of the Roman Empire who were not killed in battle were brought to the, the, the umbilicus, put on trial on traitor's post, which is where the same place that Romulus was, 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 was killed by his brother Remus, which created the Momentum Mori Ceremony. Now, where the, the name of the Momentum Mori Ceremony comes from the fourth pyramid from, from north that, uh, Drawing south, the fourth pyramid down, the Mem 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 Kare Pyramid. Say that again. Mem Kare Pyramid is the foundation, is the base etymology of the ceremony of Momento Mori. So, and in the base of the of the word remember, this is the same. This is the same etymology. So, you have the pyramids of Rome and Genesis is the same thing. All aspects of the Roman culture are based off of the Momento Mori ceremony, and it's first the, the to make the city in the first place to rename it to to claim it as his own. Romulus killed his brother on Traitor's Post, and then he was his body was moved a few a le, less than two three dozen feet north to where the Curia to to just off of the of the steps of the Curia Julia where it stands sits now and has been sat sat for the next the last two hundred two thousand years. Well a little over 240, 250 years somewhere in there, 250, 260. And he was put in a mastaba there. Now if it looks like a duck quacks like a duck, has feathers, duck, um, lays its eggs, and the DNA says it's a duck, it's a duck. So since it looks identical to, to several million examples of mastabas in Egypt, and it doesn't look like anything else, well, it's a, it's a, it's a mastaba. So period, it's a mastaba. You have a main room and then a burial chamber off to the side. And, there, and every mastaba in existence has that configuration. Some are less, form, some are less formal, some are more formal. It's still the same exact, it's still the same basic exact design. You have a main, you have, a sh- you have the shaft, you have the main room, and then the, where they put the body off to the side. So, from King Tut, all, all, all the several million examples of mastabas, same exact engineering. So, it's a mastaba. So, now he was forced to, to take his cross after he was found guilty, though, because he was the biggest, baddest, boldest, threat to the Roman Empire. Their existence, he was, he was forced to march north around the Capitoline Hill and then across the, the, out the gates, across the, the field of Mars, over the bridge, and then, and then dispatched in a, in a, in a, he was double dispatched, very Janus-like, very, very, very 
east and west thing. He was killed west. He was he was tortured badly west. Uh, east, sorry. He was tortured badly east, approximately where the obelisk of Rome is now. And he was officially sword, well, yeah, sword, um, the blade. That whole story is mostly incorrect. Um, the name of the blade is Longinus, not the name of the man. The then he was killed west to further make sure he was that, he, that boy was dead, and then other things happened. So twelve minutes. I'm just getting to the point. This story is massively complicated. Yeah. There's also some Passover aspects to this from March 22nd to October 31st. You have the light side of uh, the light, the lightness, the, the, the joy, the Christos of Passover. Well, from March, from October 31st to March 22nd, that's the dark part, part of Passover. And that that that's, it has a considerably large amount to do with the all the aspects of Christianity and several other the, uh, theologies and theocrats the, um, that that exist. So here's the point: there is a there's a time thing, a time loop, a time configuration going on with there. There's a time thing going on there. I discovered this when I was when I was talking to a, a friend of mine who lives in Tulsa. I've uh, we've known each other for about ten years, and she's a really good friend. Um, based off of conversations I had with another friend that I've own, known for like three ish weeks, two and a half, three weeks, who also lives in Tulsa. And as we were as the the other friend and I were talking, some, some idea my brain started picking up on some on basic ideas. And then, as I'm talking to my, my the friend I've had for ten years, that conversation led to this this mind connections thing. Based off of an, a different friend in in Florida, about eighteen months ago, give or take, that friend told me about the moment. Oh, that wow! That the sermon you're describing sounds like the moment of Mari sermon. And I said, "What are you talking about?" And I then looked it up and, and backfilled the amount of, the, of information in. And then have partially redesigned um, significant portions of the, of, the, of the story and such. But where this specific Trader's Post and Tulsa came into understanding in my brain is the fact that we were talking about Ugdrasil. Uh, the world tree in, in in latin in english it's called the world tree in norwegian it's called Ugdrasil, y g g d r a s i l and Ugdrasil, there there seems to be okay so between you have you have 1a which is some kind of a of a assault violent act which that name and partially comes from the name of the first pharaoh of egypt the first Pharaoh of a united Egypt, who was who was not a mythical char character, that would be the, the Pharaoh, Pharaoh Narmer, and his name literally means to strike, to impale, to hit, to to cause injury, to impact, or Newton's third rule. Um, any any all motion motion is equal and opposite. So if you if if object A interferes with the trajectory, the motion, or the stillness of ob object B. That is an impact, Newton's third rule. So you have 1A, and then you have 1B, and 1B is some type of an emotional situation, interaction, by it, be it just a general, oh, I like that, or I don't like that, or what have you, or some type of a biochemical interaction or something. It's the the, the spectrums and, and, and gradations of what this could apply to are close to not limited, but there's some limitations. Then you have 1C, which is where the victim in 1A is sent to the other side in uh, to to be a in game in game terminology. It's the one person 1A victims is is sent sent across as a game terminology of an extra life for the commander, 
or the politician or a warrior or what have you, the person who is who needs it done, who needs the needs an extra life in, in the afterlife. One one B switches the souls, at least what what have you, in some kind in some kind of a biochemical rea um, ceremony that the Romans performed on an almost constant daily basis. And then one C is the tunnel that takes the juice, the the electricity, the 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 the, the spiritual the ghost, the what have you, you know, the the spiritual stuff, the prayers, the wishes, the thoughts, dreams, ideas, emotions, what have you, and that acts as a as a as a, as a basically a scabbo around the the victim of the one A, and that's one one C sent to the other side. Then there's of course the the part two, which is part two is the community involvement. For the Romans, that usually meant some type of a parade or some kind of a, a bit large community involvement, at least two to three, two or more people involved. In fact, that's the basis of the gospel phrase of where two or more are there, are present, I am there. Well, that's that's part of it. That's that's the two. Now, part three is what Romans called genius. And when, when Romans called something genius, they didn't mean that you had a, had a, a higher ability to Use your brain and to let it function. You had a your person who could open your open your mind up to eureka moments, to flashes of inspiration. IQ didn't matter to the Romans on this specific subject. Also, this is um, in Jewish in the Jewish tradition and Jewish language, Hebrew language. This is called mezuzah. Because by the way, mezuzah's main symbol the shin, Hebrew shin. You have a a base, and you have one third, two thirds. It's, and, but you have a really wide thing, and a really wide thing, and a really wide thing going on here. So you have to have the shin and the Hebrew and all that, all that stuff going on. So in Tulsa, you have. The functionality and structure of some kind of a of a time situation. Now, how I found this was, is that you take those points, one A, one B, one C, and two. Three is not. It's it's important. It's it's part of the the, the it's part of the mathematical dynamic, because it, this is a C. This becomes a C. That which is joined by this C, that those energies and prayers and that kind of stuff go, go to the other side, and then the the circuit completes, and then a a, a gene, uh, somebody who's open enough up to it can then hear, hear, feel, sense, idea, spark of inspiration, what have you. Will then get the other. The, will will complete Ohm's law, the circle completing the the, the circuit aspects of it, have an idea, and then bring it to whoever whoever needs to hear it. In order to be able to have the community say, "Okay, that's a good idea," or that no, we're not doing that, no, 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 no. or or some to that effect. That that is the the talkback feature. That's the math. Well, in here you have you have this going on. You know, you have this going on. You have an infrastructure in here. You have a an infrastructure between A and B. You have an infrastructure between B and C, and you have an infrastructure between C and two. Well, this infrastructure, apparently that infrastructure has something to do with the functionality aspects and concepts of something to do with time. So, and if you, you, know, you have these three, you know, these points, and then, and then of course, you have the, the, that, that, point, that, that point over there. Well, this is both, si both sides of a circle. There's a circle here. So you have this. Well, that the in mythology from the poetic Eddas, you have this is in the size and shape and de de definition of that is the the roots, the three primary roots of the tree of Ugdrasil, the A, B, and C tree, uh, A, B, and C roots of Ugdrasil, which is represented in architecture by way of the Khufu pyramid, which is the second down and the, the farthest north on the Giza plateau. Its causeway bisects Everest. Yes, three thousand miles away, according to to 
the rules of, of uh, 5,280 5, feet per mile, it's, it's 3,000 miles away, and it doesn't bisect close, somewhere in the neighborhood of, of over there, hopefully we're close enough. I mean, it bisects the very, very tippy top, tippy, 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 tippy top, tippy top of the Mount Everest. That's where the causeway bisects. This is about 10, 8, 10, 15 feet wide. The, 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 the causeway of the Khufu Pyramid is about 8, 10, 15 feet, uh, is 15 feet wide. So this causeway, the very, very dead center of it, bisects the very, very dead center of the very tippy, tippy top of Mount Everest. So they saying that they had, some, they had it on the ball when it comes to mathematics and such would be a mild understatement. And they didn't use math, they didn't use Arabic math, they used a different type of math which is part of the reason why my re my research is so bloody complicated is because you're trying to decode mathematics from language and language from mathematics. <sighs> so Uglerasil, that the, the Uglerasil thing, there's some time involved with Uglerasil, the world tree. There's some time thing going on. So it's, it's also the, the, you know, the, 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 the shin thing, the, the shin thing with the 1A, 1B, 1A, 1B, 1C, 2, the shin thing places Trader's Post right there, places T Tulsa right there. <sighs> Things get a little weird because the Trader's Post is not, is not, is not against, is not directly against the um, the base of the Capitoline Hill. Neither is the Temple of Concord. It's not. It's not flush against the back, back of the of the of the Capitoline Hill. It's out a few feet. It's several feet long. It sticks out into the form several feet, and then there's there's a 10, 15, 20 feet from from the end of, of the Temple of Concord to two Trader's Post, to the to the umbilicus. So you have it's out. 75 to 100 feet or so, give or take. So you have so that distance is ratio-wise the distance between the and uh, the the shoreline and the floodplain end of the Mississippi to the, to the city of Tulsa and the, on the Arkansas River. That's ratio-wise about close to the to dead on the money. So this shape. And you have this shape. By the way, five is a huge thing for masonry. So you have, and, and it actually, that'd be interesting because you have the EA, and you have the FC, and you have the MM. Every mason in the world knows what that means. So you have pillars, and then you have this coming in, and then you have the circle over here, obviously. So you have this coming in. So there's a there's a time situation, time loop, so a time structure, time uh, maybe even portal. Who knows what's going on here? There's a there's a portal situation going on that makes things very 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 interesting. And not only does it make things very 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 interesting, it also makes for and allows for the functionality and structure of um, much, much further study, much profoundly more further study. Anyway, um, don't, for, don't for, forget to subscribe to this page. And thank you very much. My name is T.R. Welling, and more videos to come. Thank you so much.